Welcome, everybody. Almost had my mic turned off. Welcome, everybody, to uh, an emergency podcast. Maybe just a lunchtime chat. We'll see if this goes up on the podcast uh, platform in a minute here. But um, <clears throat> welcome to the Pride of Detroit Twitch channel, YouTube channel, podcast, all that fun stuff. We are here because the Lions dropped some quite shocking news on Monday morning. Special teams coordinator Braden Coombs has been fired. At first, there was plenty of outrage, um, understandably so. Then we started to get a little bit more information about what happened, why it happened. Um, obviously, there was a big uh, pivotal point in the game on Sunday in which the Lions det- <clears throat> decided to fire up a fake punt. Um, Lions were down two scores, 14 points, about t- somewhere between 12 and 10 minutes left in the game. Fourth and four from their own 30. They don't convert. They come up a, about a half yard short. And that's basically the game. The Titans score a few plays later. It's a 21-point game, and it's over. Well... News comes out that Daryl uh, Daryl Bevel that Braden Coombs in fact went rogue there. Daryl Bevel apparently called for a punt. Braden Coombs took it upon himself to say, "Let's fake it." And <clears throat> from there, um, obviously the lines didn't make it. And wake up the next morning, Braden Coombs is filing out his room uh, into a cardboard box, and now no longer on the team. <clears throat> um, a lot of angry reactions, some of it coming from myself at first. I did give it some time now to think about it, and while I'm still not in favor of the move, I understand it. I get it. Um, let, let, let's break it down from, from a bunch of viewpoints here. First and foremost, what Braden Coombs did was absolutely unacceptable. You can't call a rank like that. You can't undermine your head coach like that, even if you think – He's in the wrong in punting it, and I do think he was wrong. And I agree with Braden Coombs. I wish they would have gone for it. I wish they just would have straight up gone for it and not, you know, had to resort to the special teams coordinator undermining their head coach and, and pulling a fake punt. But that's not how you go about it. You do not pull rank on on your on your head coach. I don't care if he's an interim head coach. I don't care if you thought you should have been the interim head coach, which is maybe what was going through Braden Coombs' mind at the time. But you just don't do that as a first time head, you know, off special teams coordinator. Um, you have to know that. You have to know that 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 <clears throat> that's just completely unacceptable, and it's completely unacceptable. And Daryl Bevel is right to be pissed. Daryl Bevel is probably right to want his job now. Um, so I don't blame Daryl Bevel at all in making this decision to fire him. I do blame him for not going for it, but that's a whole different story. Let's just talk about the firing in this, in this instance here. Um, <clears throat> that being said, there's a lot that I don't like about this. I don't like that they're making decisions about their coaching staff with two weeks remaining in the season. I don't like that now it's not up to the next general manager, the next head coach to decide if Braden Coombs is someone worth keeping around. Um, I don't like that Braden Coombs did a hell of a job this year. The Lions punt coverage has been fantastic. Kick coverage has been just as good. Kick and punt returns are both in top half of the league. And you look at just about every statistic short of DVOA, which they're kind of an average special teams unit, but PFF grade, all that sort of stuff, this was a fantastic special teams unit. The only thing that seemingly took a step back is Matt Prater, and if you're putting that on Braden Coombs, what are, what are we really doing here? <clears throat> um, but the, the Lions have talked about extensively, really s- since last week, about how this team is trying to build a Detroit Lions culture. And and Chris Spielman de- defined that as everyone rowing in the right direction, communication from top to bottom being on, everyone on the same page, and this was a prime example of that not being here right now. That was a prime example of Braden Coombs doing something selfish. That was a prime example of Braden Coombs breaking the rank and doing something that he shouldn't have done. And, and whether that's the Lions making exa- an example out of him or, or what, I understand the move. I really do. I don't like it. I think, I think if you're getting, a guy, getting rid of a guy like Braden Coombs, who by all means was, was well-loved by the players, by all means got absolutely everything he could out of those players and was probably the best coach on the staff, how, I mean, how can you be in favor of that? How can you, how can you trumpet culture over that? You actually got results. This is the team that hasn't been able to get results in decades, and you you scream culture over the one guy who was getting you results, and so that's frustrating to me, absolutely frustrating to me. And I, again, I get it. 
because you're, you're starting anew. And, and if you let something like this slide, it looks bad. But I think there was a middle ground here. I think there was something else they could have done. And I'm not just talking like a slap on the wrist for Braden Coombs. Something more serious. Suspend him for a game. Con- con- you know, conduct detrimental to a team. Maybe maybe Bevel throws or maybe Coombs throws a fit and 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 quits after that or something like that. But <clears throat> I just think you know the guy's a first time special teams coordinator and yes he should know better. But give him a break here. Maybe I mean maybe there's even kind of a an, an, an organizational confusion right now. Maybe there isn't a clear chain of command um, in the middle of a game. You have to imagine there is, but you know with an interim head coach maybe roles aren't as clearly defined as they normally are. Um, and so, you, you know, Bevel has his hands full. Maybe he's not thinking straight or whatever. Either way, Coombs made a mistake, but I think it's worthy of a little bit of leeway. Now, if you listen to some of the reports out there, it wasn't, this isn't just necessarily an isolated incident. There are some people that said, um, you know, this was, this was all about, you know, Coombs was the kind of guy that was prioritizing himself over the team. This was a long time coming. This was something that had been building up to this moment. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. There's no evidence of that being true other than reports coming out, and those all those reports, you know, are coming from the Lions. We've yet to hear Coombs' side of the story, and we likely never will. Um, we'll likely get more from Bevel later today when he's supposed to meet with the, with the press, um, have his own little press conference as he typically does on a Monday afternoon. Um, maybe we'll get a little more clarity there. I have to imagine, given the kind of person that we know Bevel to be, he's not going to talk bad about Coombs. He's just going to say... We just, we decided to you know part our ways and leave it at that. He probably doesn't want to talk about it, and I respect him for that. Um, but the Lions are leaking all this information right now that Coombs was a head case. He was he was an egomaniac, and and okay, I'm I'm editorializing and maybe stretching it a little bit there, but basically they're putting it out there that Coombs did this to himself. Um, he he clearly wasn't a culture fit, and I don't know. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. The one thing I do know is that we've already seen a couple pe- couple Lions players go on Twitter defending the guy, saying, what are we doing? I, I We've talked to special teams guys throughout the year, and all of them seem to have loved Bevel. So where exactly is the culture fit problem here? Is it is it simply a butting head as of coaches? Because if that's the case, why not let the next coach in and, and see if there's not as much butting of the heads? Um, I, I just... I think it's a little bit of a hasty decision. I don't like making coaching decisions for the next regime before they even show in through the door. So I I don't love the decision. I get it. Maybe Coombs did this to himself. He certainly made a huge mistake on Sunday by trying to pull rank. But it's frustrating from a line standpoint. It's frustrating to see the team let go one of maybe the most up-and-coming coaches that they had on that coaching staff. Um, a guy that some people, you know, are are starting to pencil in as, as a potential head coaching candidate. I don't know. I just I and and Bruce Betterly from YouTube says it exactly how how I would. I think this situation should have been handled differently and privately. If they could have done that, absolutely. And and again, like maybe this maybe it's true. Maybe this situation had gotten so out of control behind the scenes that this nest, like this was a final straw. And and again, this was a big final straw. He made a very 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 big mistake that mistake that you don't make. Um, but I just feel like I don't know. I feel like this was a little bit drastic. Um, I don't like. I don't like that the decision was made. Honestly, I just. Again, I want to defend Bevel here in terms of I think he's he's fully right to go to management and be like, listen, this guy just pulled rank on me. I want him gone. I can't. I can't coach for with this guy, in for the final two games of the season because I don't trust him. From his point of view, I get it. Absolutely. But I think it's on the Lions to step in there, whether it's Rod Wood, Chris Bielman, Sheila Ford Hamp, to step in and be like, you know what? I get it, but figure it out. There's two games left. You can manage. And you know what? This isn't your decision to make about the Lions' future. This is the general manager, the next general manager's decision to make, the next head coach's decision to make. And that's what I would have liked to see the Lions do. Now, were we ever going to get that? Probably not. And like I said, maybe they decided... You know these kind of moves aren't the kind of culture fit that that w- they want out of the next general manager. They know they know for a fact that the next general manager they get isn't going to accept that kind of pulling of the rank. And may and and they're probably right in wanting a guy that that won't accept that sort of thing. But at least give them the chance to make that decision because, by all means, Coombs is a guy who got got you know results. He got a a top ten rated special teams unit 
that really made a lot of difference in some of these games. So in general, I, I just, I'm not happy about it. I'm not furious about it because I do understand it. Um, Coombs, Coombs certainly didn't do anything to help himself. And ultimately he's going to have to take responsibility for that. I don't think Coombs has anyone to blame but himself, but from a Lions fans point of view, from a Lion organizational point of view, I think this was a mistake. I just do. And I'll take a few of your questions. I wanted to make this just kind of a, a short little uh, stream, maybe a podcast, whatever, just to kind of talk about it um, uh, and, and see what you guys are thinking. I know a lot of you are very frustrated and understandably so. So um, Wei Jin says, who makes this decision? Um, based on all the reports out there, it sounds like Daryl Bevel came to you know the Lions front office and said, I want this done. Rod Wood signed off on it. Team President Rod Wood signed off on it. So um if there's if there's someone to blame, and I hate to be the guy that always seems to be pointing the finger at Rod Wood, um, I think he should have been the one to step in and be like, "Listen, I understand you. I hear what you're saying, but that's not your decision to make. Let's let's leave that up to the next general manager or head coach. And if you know what, if you win the job, Daryl Daryl Bevel, then we'll fire him." <clears throat> um, a lot of people talking about um, they did convert. Spot was bullshit. I don't know. Unfortunately, I, I went back and watched it this morning, um, partially to see if there was any interesting uh, interactions between Bevel and Coombs, and there, there really wasn't. Um, partially to see whether there was a conversion. There was no good angle. Um, uh, you know, the live angle, I thought he was short. There was that other angle that was, like, from the end zone that you couldn't really tell. It looked like maybe his arm had crossed over towards, you know, the, the 40, what was it, 35-yard line, 45-yard line, whatever it was. Um but nothing conclusive. Bevel said in his post game, you know, the, the coaches in the booth were telling him there was nothing conclusive or there were, I think he even said there were a couple angles that said it, he looked short. So I think at, at that point, you know, it was close enough where you probably want to review it. You probably, I mean, you probably accept fate um, that you didn't win that game if, uh, if you don't convert. So why not just burn a timeout? Like, um, I don't know. Either way, um, I thought the decision to go for it would have been the right decision. Faking it is is second on my priority list. I think I think you lose a lot of the surprise element of a of a fake punt when you're down by 14 in the fourth quarter. Um, so that's my second preference, and then the last preference is to punt it because I just I mean you saw how that defense was playing that game. Is there any sort of faith that you guys had that the that Tennessee wouldn't come down and at least score a field goal? No, um, but again. None of that is an excuse to pull a rank and just call a rogue fake punt like uh, like Coombs reportedly did. So um, he built his own grave there in, in that aspect. <clears throat> um, did Spielman have any say in this? Uh, according to Kyle Meinke of MLive, he did not. Good question. Um, but, yeah, as, uh, as someone in the chat said, he's apparently – he doesn't even have an office in Allen Park yet. Um, this was just uh, essentially – it was essentially just um, Daryl Bevel going to Rodwood and saying, "Hey, I want this done," and Be and and Rodwood saying, "Okay, we're doing it," and that's it. Um, you think the Lions were more worried about losing Bevel as potential offensive coordinator was a factor in approving this move? It's an interesting question, Lions, but not one I really have considered yet. I would hope not. Um, you know, I, I think that's looking a little bit too far ahead. I think at this point, um, you want to keep everything on the table and. I don't know if you say if you say no to Bevel, does he be like, all right, well, I'm done, maybe, and and maybe there's a risk of that him him walking out in the final two games of the season, and suddenly what could have just been a simple firing of a special teams coordinator becomes like a full on scandal. Um, that's obviously not a good look. I don't know how close. I I I doubt Bevel would do something like that. Um, that doesn't seem like his his type of move. But yeah, maybe it does risk the the opportunity of of being able to keep him around. Um, personally, personally speaking, um, whenever the Lions hire a new head coach, I, I think Bevel should be low on, on the candidate list, both for offensive coordinator and, and head coach. Um, I'd like to just kind of start in a new direction. And I think you can start in a new direction while retaining your special teams coordinator, which is why I think it's a bit of a riskier move to get rid of, um, Coombs, then risk losing Bevel. Um, but at the same time, I don't know. I haven't gotten clarification on this. Was the spot of the fake punt reviewed either by the league or by challenge? It wasn't automatic. If it wasn't automatically reviewed and Bevel didn't challenge it, that's an equally bad decision. Um, yes, it was not automatically reviewed because I don't believe a turnover on downs is considered a turnover that is automatically reviewed by the NFL. Um, Coom, or I keep saying Coombs when I mean um, Bevel. 
Bevel did say in the post game presser that he decided not to challenge. He said um, that you know he um, the the people up in the booth told him wasn't looking good, probably not worth the challenge, and he decided it was worth it to potentially save a timeout, which I can kind of get. You're obviously down two scores, so you're if you even have a chance at winning this game, which is, I mean, it was already minuscule at that point. You're probably going to need timeouts to do it, but yeah, um, at that point, it was just it was not challenged. <clears throat> Nothing says new head coach can't bring him back with understanding that it can't ha- ever happen again. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I think I think you could have made it clear to Braden Coombs that this was absolutely 100% unacceptable i think you can do more than just a slap on the wrist and tell them you do this again you're gone um rather than just kind of cutting the cords but again it, it depends on what you believe coming out um because the lines are saying this was not this was a long time coming this was the last straw this was a guy who was thinking more about himself than the team if you're to believe all of that then then yeah maybe this sort of move is understandable if you think that's the lines trying to cover their own ass well then well then you know you know <laughs> Shout out to uh, Hawkinson and Quandre Diggs for making the Pro Bowl. Yeah, I don't know if that's been announced yet. Um, I know they're announcing the rosters tonight, um, I, and I also know Hawkinson led the vote, uh, the, the fan vote. I don't know if everything else has been um, decided, if maybe that has happened in the last 10 minutes that I've been live, 20 minutes that I've been live. But, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're probably going to wrap it up here quickly. Uh, I do uh, appreciate um, the questions. I also appreciate the 10-month subscription from Darth Hippo, who says, I was on the Bevel train before this, but I think it's – Better to clean house completely now. Yeah, I think a lot of people have soured on Bevel after this. And, um, you know, I, I didn't particularly like how he coached the game on Sunday anyways. Um, the Lions punted from the Titans' t- territory in that game. I didn't like the op- I didn't like the, the choice to, to punt, uh, which I, I guess that was his decision to punt instead of fake punt in that opportunity. Um, wasn't particularly fond of, of Hawkinson on third and one running the ball either. But, uh, again, I'm, I'm kind of working in hindsight here. Um, did we ever interview Coombs for head coach? Um, I don't believe there was any interview process for the interim head coach job. I think you just kind of assign the guy. Um, so I would say the answer to that is no. In a normal business, a uh, normal profession, they would fire him. What is a business guy? That's a good point. Um, yeah, a, a guy undermines his boss, scrounds for being fired. No question. Um, I do think there was the, the, the decision was a little more complicated than that in this situation simply because everyone is, is, is working – knowing that they could very well be out of the job in a month. And so um, a long-term head coach. I don't think they've done any internal uh, interviews for head coach yet. I think they're waiting. At this point, it appears they're probably waiting to do uh, uh, a, a, either a general man- manager hire or all that stuff. Um, the, Lions, the Lions have done a good job about announcing when they make uh, a formal interview, and nothing has been um, – uh, announced in terms of head coaching interviews. So I think it looks like they're probably pri- prioritizing general manager first. Thank you for the live Twitch so I can vent about the frustr- this ridiculous move. No problem, Murphy. That's part of the reason why I think I wanted to do this. <clears throat> they can interview Salah early now? True. Doesn't look like... Have they officially been eliminated from playoffs? I'm sure they have. Um, they, they obviously still have to wait until the end of the season, but uh, I think what you're saying is they don't have to wait for a, a playoff run like they did half... Like they had to with uh with Patricia, obviously. Um, answer a couple more questions here before I we, we jump off. Um, thank you everyone again for for spending your lunch time with me. Um, you think the lines were? Oh, we are, I already answered that one. Um, would Coombs stay if there was a conversation? That's a good question. I mean, how I I'd love to hear Coombs' side of things here. Um, if uh, if you know if. I don't know. I, 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 I'm trying to think of, of, of possible ways that Coombs could defend himself. I don't think there's any way to defend yourself, you know, uh, over, um, overmining or undermining, uh, your, your head coach. Um, maybe, but uh, there's always a chance that maybe there was a confu there was confusion or something that he tried to communicate, never got communicated, or maybe he was just pulled a rank and was like, you know what? I thought it was the right move to make at the time. And I, I wanted to do best by my by my team. Um, if that's the case, I think I think he's still very much in the wrong. But um, yeah, can they interview if a team is in the playoffs, or if they, or do they have to wait until they're eliminated? They can do a Zoom interview um, before they're eliminated, um, but they cannot uh, do an in person interview until their season is over. <clears throat> that's and those are new COVID rules this year, so. 
maybe he had green light if uh, defense gave certain look. <clears throat> um, maybe. All the, I mean, again, all that stuff is stuff we just don't simply know. All we're getting is information fed to the Lions media from the Lions, which says he pulled rank, he was an issue for a while, and we, we did what we thought was best for the Lions culture. And I can understand it. I still don't agree with it because you got rid of one of their best head coaches, a young up-and-comer who probably could have been a special teams coordinator for decades if, uh, if he had continued to improve or maybe even rose to the ranks of something else. And so, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. We'll see if uh, if Bevel has anything else to say on the matter. We'll see if Coombs ever goes public with what went wrong here. But either way, it's it's a frust- from the Lions' point of view, it's all frustrating, right? Like, from, from our point of view, Lions lost a good head coach and we a good uh, coordinator, I should say. And whether that was the coordinator's fault, whether that was Bevel's fault, whether, whether that's Rod Wood's fault for not letting the, the next general manager head coach side – we're the ones that lose, right? We're the ones that just lost out on a, a, a coach that was doing a heck of a good job, had has potentially a, a bright future, and you know it's it's just it's just what seems to always happen with Lions fans. We we get the the bitter end of the stick here, um, and uh, unfortunately that that ends with losing a losing a, a good coach. And maybe it's maybe it's a good coach that made a bad one bad mistake. Maybe it's losing a, a good coach who's a little too into himself. Um, we're, we're not exactly sure here, but the one thing that, that that I think is the most concerning for me is this was a guy whose record was absolutely clean, 100% clean. The guy was extremely well liked by the media. He was he was very everything he said in the media seemed to to show a guy who was humble. You know, he talked when when Matt Patricia got fired, he talked about how you know sad he was and and how how much he felt he owed to someone like Matt Patricia for, for giving him the opportunity. Um, He always seemed to credit his players. Anytime someone would say, you know, like, well, wow. I mean, what, what sort of credit, what, what a great job you've been doing with Jack Fox. He'd be the first one to tell you like, no, Jack Fox is doing it himself. The dude has a hell of a leg. And so I don't know. It, it, it doesn't pass the smell test necessarily with me that this guy was just suddenly a, you know, a, a coaching cancer, a guy who, who was hard to work with, impossible to work with. But then again, you, you pull rank like this and, and you don't do yourself any favors. So in the end, like I said, the Lions lose out on what appears to be a pretty good coach. We don't know who's at fault. It doesn't matter who's at fault because, again, he's gone now. He's not coming back. And Lions are just going to have to deal with that and add you know one more person that they're going to have to find in this offseason search. And maybe they were going to be looking for a new special teams coordinator anyways. We will obviously – Never know if that was in the cards or not, but um, bad news overall for for Lions fans. You you lose a good coach. You, you have more organization dysfunction, dysfunction, which is never good. Hopefully, all that gets remedied this off season. We'll see what Spielman and company do with the new general manager and head coaching search. But for now, it sucks. It's unfortunate. But it's what we got to live with. So with that, I think I'm going to end the, uh, the the little emergency podcast. Thank you guys for joining us for spending your lunch with me, and uh, we'll see you on Tuesday night talking about one of the Lions general manager candidates, Thomas Dimitrov. So be sure you're here probably evening. We're still working out a time on that. But again, thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys again soon.